When God has something for you to do, relax. Take a deep breath. He's got your back. In the 90s, we had a big push within our organization to expose the world to the claims of Christ, to the gospel. And of course, in Albania, since 1965 and the Cultural Revolution in China, which Albania mirrored, atheism was the official and enforced religion, and so you couldn't practice anything. Every Muslim mosque, every church was closed down. Every, every minaret was turned into a factory smokestack. And so I kept saying, Lord, what do you want us to do? What do you want us to do in Albania? And finally, during a country director's conference, I was sitting there, and as he started the talk, I literally saw something from the Lord. Call it a vision, call it a dream, I was wide awake. Um, I am not a very much of a Pentecostal charismatic type of guy. I mean, I believe God can do these types of things. But I said, guys, I think the Lord has given us this vision. And as I shared with them the scope of it, which was the entire country, using the Jesus film, and I literally saw the whole thing. Now at the time, we only had a team of eight. And it was ridiculous to even think that that was possible. But the Lord had so convinced me through this that I started sharing with all the other leaders saying, you know, tell me where I'm wrong in this. I mean, the team was like rolling their eyes like, you've got to be kidding, there's only eight of us. I mean, how is this going to happen? And it was a good question. It was a valid question. 67% of all the population lived in rural areas in Albania at the time in 1993. 53% of all the 2,400 villages didn't even have a road into it. They had trails. This, there's parts of this country that are like the Alps in Switzerland. If we have these base camps out in these village areas, I mean, we don't even know how many rolls of toilet paper to have on hand. I mean, how do you figure this out? And I remember we did a budget for it and we thought, and I thought, there's no way. I mean, it's going to take at least a quarter million dollars just to get set up. And so we knew it would be really a difficult thing to do. And as, as we refined it, it, it went down into a 10 page plan. But the interesting thing in, at the same time, we heard that the leadership of the Southern Baptists, who was David and Mary Carpenter at the time, were emphatic, they wanted to meet with us. And I said to Alex and Corey, who were the team leaders, I said, why don't you come along with me? I said, I don't know what they want. So as we sat there, we ordered dinner and literally, and for the next 20 minutes, they just launched into this vision that God had given them. And as Corey and Alex were listening to them, they were just like, and finally Corey goes, and, and they said, Mary said, Mary Carmen says, well, we're not trying to tell you what to do. We're just telling you what God gave us this vision for. And Corey looked at me and says, Don, just show him the 10 page plan. And so I handed him this, he says, and I said, you're now entering the spiritual twilight zone. And so they, they looked at this and it's a plan to reach Al Albania. And they go like this. You mean to tell me We've been trying to pour out our hearts for the last 20 minutes and you already have it written up? It was word for word. Literally, word for word. We wept. And Cor Corey and Alex, who were rolling their eyes amongst the other ones, going, it's God, it's God, this is God. And, and what God showed me became what is called the Arrow Project, Albanian, Evangelical Rural Outreach, A-E-R-O. And so we were walking by and my wife Catherine goes, Don, he says, Hella Mission is in the orphanage right here. They said, we have this helicopter, it's a Bell Jet Ranger. And I said, well, we need to see if it even fits. And so they showed us the helicopter and we took the equipment for the Jesus film. We set it in, the long pole thing went in the back of the tail Closed the thing, we still had the generator. He went over to the back door and in between the two, he just went and it was like a millimeter of space. And he says, it's like this, he was, he was a Swiss guy, he says, it's like this helicopter was made for this equipment. And they said, we're in. And so literally it started. And I remember the night that I laid awake and I thought about the money issues and, and I heard this thought, this is mine, 
You don't have to raise a dime. I got it. And it was just like God said that to me. I said, okay, God, if it's yours, it's got to be yours because I can't do it. I have no power for this. I have no ability to this. I'm not a great administrator. I'm not a great fundraiser. Literally, some guy calls. He says, we have this bus to give you. What do you think? Sure, bring it on. And then the Southern Baptist says, they want to come and help you set up base camps. They can do all the showers, they can do all the bath uh, bathing, they can do all the trench toilets you need. And I go, where in the world is this coming from? I didn't even know we needed this stuff. And God just started laying it on. And I didn't have to raise a dime. Literally, I did not raise a dime. And God just brought in a quarter of a million dollars in 330 days. It was the largest summer projects the crusade has ever had. We had over five, thousand people involved from 31 agencies, 18 different countries. Every village, every town, everyone had an opportunity. We're here to tell you about Jesus. And God did it all. He just did it all. And it was like, will you just trust me? If I call you to do a plan and it's my plan, you don't think I'm going to take care of it? And I'm going, I cannot believe what God is doing. That in the most difficult countries, in the most difficult geography, God can give you a plan that makes it possible. He can lead you, he can guide you, he can equip you, he can empower you. God has ways to do things. And if we just listen to him, if we just pray and say, Lord, how do you want to do it? Because if you just take any generic plan, you stop listening to God because you think you have the plan. And sometimes, most times, all times, his plan is better than ours.